What's up everybody, this is Danny and welcome back to another episode of Ultimate Smart Home. And today I've partnered with HP to bring you a top smart home tech video. I haven't done one of these in a while, so this is going to be fun. While I've been mostly using Google Assistant and SmartThings, I am experimenting with moving over to HomeKit, so I'm going to be trying out some thread compatible products. There aren't a ton out there right now, so I grabbed the ones that made sense. If you don't know what Thread is, don't worry, I'll explain what it is and why it's so important to Smart Home moving forward later on in this video. And everything that I'm gonna show you today is gonna be linked down below. So if you wanna pick any of it up, it's gonna be really easy. First, let's start with some budget Smart Home tech. I've been using this for a while now and this is the TP-Link Casa Smart Plug. So even though this is a few years old, this is awesome because with one plug, you can get two smart outlets, one on each side. And it's been working great since it works with Google Assistant, Alexa, and SmartThings. But the size of this thing is pretty huge and I'm trying to move over to HomeKit. So I found the Meros Double Plug and it's only $15. And it supports Alexa, Google, SmartThings, and HomeKit. So it's super flexible and it's much, much smaller. Of course, with all Smart Home compatible products, the setup is super easy. You just scan the code. And after getting it set up, look at how fast this thing is. It's literally instantaneous when you turn it on and off. I am using one side to turn on my theater seating in the office and the other side to turn on the arcade machine. There are physical buttons here too if you just want to turn things on and off manually and I think these are a great addition to any smart home. Second is the SwitchBot smart switch button slash robot. This could be one of the best smart home hacks out there right now and I'm not sure why it took me so long to jump on board. I do have a big SwitchBot ecosystem video coming out very soon so make sure you stay tuned for that. It's going to be awesome. But basically what this does is it automates anything that has a power button or has a rocker type switch. So if you don't want to mess with wiring, this could be the easiest way to get smart lighting in your house. You do need one of their hubs if you want to take it beyond Bluetooth, but you can literally turn on your computer with it, which I think is awesome. You can turn on fancy coffee machines or anything that basically has a power button, old stereo equipment. Just imagine the retrofit options that you have with this. So to get cloud-based automations, you will need a hub but you don't need to get it to work because you can use it just through Bluetooth. So if you want to use something like this on an RV or a boat with just a tablet or a smartphone, you can definitely do that. So this is an interesting product. It's 30 bucks and sometimes you can get a deal with different packages. So definitely check this one out. The definition of smart home tech is that it solves a problem, it makes life more convenient, and it automates everyday tasks. So while HP Plus is not traditional smart home tech, it definitely fits all of the criteria. What I appreciate about HP's approach is they took everything inconvenient about printing and made the entire process better by connecting the HP NV printer, Smart Ink, and the Smart App to give you the best printing experience for your home. The first problem it solves is keeping up with ink levels and with a busy lifestyle and two kids running around the house, the last thing that I have time for is to go to the store just to buy more ink. With Instant Ink, I don't even think about this anymore because printers with HP Plus keep up with ink levels automatically and when it's running low, it lets HP know and ink arrives at my doorstep before I run out. So this is a huge time saver and with new HP Plus enabled printers, you get to try Instant Ink for free, which is great. The second problem that it fixes is connection issues. We've all been there where you try to print something before, it's no longer connected to the network, so you have to unplug it, plug it back in, wait for it to reconnect to the network. But not with HP+, the Envy printer solves its own connection issues, so it's ready when you are, and the bonus is that the printer is cloud connected, so you can print virtually from anywhere, and the printer keeps itself up to date automatically without you doing anything, so you'll always have the latest and most secure software. The third thing it solves is complexity. The HP Smart App is very easy to use and you get everything that you need, including pro quality scanning, mobile fax, and so much more. Powerful features like scanning multiple receipts is clutch for business. And that also works for multiple documents too. So no matter if it's the kid's artwork that I wanna to save to Google Drive or scanning a recipe with book mode to capture both of the pages at the same time, it's all easy to use. And having quick access to all of your photos makes it very convenient to print your memories. So if you have a busy family like I do, then don't miss out on the convenience of the best printing experience for your smart home. Go ahead and give it a try. I think you're going to love it. All right, so let's talk Thread and Apple's implementation of it because I think it's going to be huge for smart home and home kit moving forward. You can do some more research on what Thread is, but to explain it simply, it's a low power, low latency mesh network protocol that will make your smart home faster and more reliable. So think about it this way. Let's say that Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Zigbee had a baby, and it's a super baby. The more thread-enabled smart home products that you add to your home, the more powerful your network gets because they can all talk to each other, 
and let's say that one of them becomes unresponsive for some reason, another product, especially ones plugged in that can act as full routers, can pick up the slack, making your products extremely responsive. This is great for multi-story homes and businesses that need to cover a lot of space and it should free up a lot of bandwidth for other things that you're using like other tech. And since this is low energy, this will also help battery powered devices like this Eve door sensor last longer. On Apple's implementation, you will need a border router like the HomePod mini or the Apple TV 4K. You don't need both, you just need one because the thread radios are built into both and these are essentially used for verification to add products to the HomeKit network. But what's most exciting to me is that I can eliminate all of this, the crazy amount of smart hubs for different ecosystems. If the device is thread enabled, then all we need is just one border router and all of your smart home can be controlled through that. And when Matter comes into fruition, it won't matter if it was made for Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, or HomeKit. It should just all work together. And that's exactly what we need right now because the lack of unification in smart home is the biggest problem with smart home. And I know a lot of you can agree to that. All the major companies have pledged to be involved and I believe the Nest Hub Max also has thread support. So I'm hoping to see Matter get sorted out sooner than later because I'm really hoping for this unification. So these are my first devices with thread and I'm going to start with the Nanoleaf Essentials A19 color changing bulb. It has that same iconic design. I really like the way it looks because I think it's unique. Besides thread being built in, I don't think fundamentally they're much different than the older bulbs, but these are the first Nanoleaf bulbs that I've ever owned. And I also picked up the Nanoleaf Essential Light Strip Starter Kit. The light strip itself looks like any other light strip and the setup was super easy as usual with HomeKit. I do like that there are physical controls on the component part of the light strip where it connects to the power supply. It's easy to turn the light on and off or control the brightness, so I think that's a nice touch. So far, so good on these with my entertainment setup. The controls are lightning fast, just as I expected, extremely responsive. So I'll be using these more with automations to see if I can tell the speed difference, but I'm super happy with it so far. The new thing that I'm excited about with these is the circadian lighting feature where the color temperature changes to match the day. So since I'm shooting this during the day, you can see behind me that you have crisp white lighting, but at nighttime it will turn to a warmer light. I think this is a neat feature. All you have to do is set a location and enable it. Really simple. The next two things are from Eve and I'm trying out the window and door sensor with thread built in. This comes with everything that you need in the box, including the battery, which is nice to see. And all you need to do is 3M tape this to a window or door and that's about it. The thing that I'm a little disappointed in is these holes. I thought they were speakers, but they are not. So there is no chime with this sensor, which is pretty standard with sensors anyway, but I wish that there was a way that the HomePod mini could make a chime sound when it's open and closed. That would be great. So if you can put that in the software update, Eve, I would love that. There are cheaper sensors out there for sure, but this is the only one that I know so far that has thread built in. So I'm going to be using it for a while to see if it's worth the price tag. I placed it on my office door. So when that sensor contact is broken, I have so many possibilities up here for automations. So let me know if you want to see a follow up video of all the automations that I'm going to be setting up for my office here with HomeKit. Maybe we can do a ultimate smart home HomeKit edition. Let me know if you want to see that in the comments below. You can also use this with the Eve app, which is nice because you can see all of your devices that are connected to HomeKit right here. And you can see exactly how many times the door was open and closed and when, which is nice. And I can always check to see if I forgot to close it before I go to bed. So this is going to be a nice addition to the office. The last thread product is the Eve smart plug. And I'm going to be 100% real on this purchase. You can get smart plugs for much cheaper, but since this product is plugged in like the lights, it's eligible for full router status for thread where battery operated devices like the door sensor are not. So this one was for research purposes to extend my network. So what I'm probably going to do is put it down in the garage to help things out down there. But for testing purposes, I'm going to be controlling all of my media up here so I can just turn all of it off and on when I need to. It has a clean LED light here that shows the status. But what's great about this is that I can turn it off in the settings, thank goodness, so you won't be bothered by it when you're sleeping. Or you can dim the LED light. So if you want it on, that's a cool option. The energy tracking and the information it gives you is great. And you have the power of scheduling, of course and all of the automation that you can think of. But at $40, this is kind of a tough sell, especially if you're not trying to build a thread connected smart home. So I'm trying out a few more HomeKit connected products. So with the camera, I'm starting with the Logitech Circle View. 
I have two or three of these, so I'm going to be hooking them up and then I'm going to see how much I like it versus the Google Nest ecosystem that I have going right now because I really like that because I can see all of my cameras in one place and I already like how HomeKit shows me the feed right there. It's easy to access. So I will definitely be following up with that. So make sure you stay tuned. Let me know if you enjoyed this episode of Ultimate Smart Home. I'm really enjoying getting back into HomeKit because to be honest with you, I never really even looked at HomeKit because of all the compatibility issues before, but HomeKit has come a long way. And with iOS 15 and Thread, I think HomeKit is just getting better and better. So I'll definitely be doing more videos on that. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one.